you very much. Moving on to referrals from Council Standing Committee, I look to Corp 1997. Change of time and schedule for regular council meetings. Mayor Carter, I acknowledge you. Uh, Corp 1997, I move the recommendations. So. Thank you. Would you like to speak on the recommendation? Not at this time. Members of the committee, Councillor Nicholson. Uh, I'd like to move that this uh, item be tabled and that an opportunity present to allow members of the public to come to a committee meeting or a council meeting. We have a tabling motion on the floor. No, no uh, discussion, no debate. Oh, sorry. Uh, could you clarify what, sorry, the clerk's looking for clarification on the on why the tabling is coming forward, just to, to... To table a motion to allow council to set up a public access meeting where members of the public can offer okay. their comments. Okay, and I'll call for a recorded vote, Madam Clerk. Sorry, Councillor Mayor Petrie, it's a tabling motion. Yeah, just a clarification through you, Mr. Chair. So does that mean that the committee doesn't want to discuss or deal with it today? The tabling is just the tabling of the matter until it's brought back up towards the committee. There's really no discussion other than it's, very, it's very, off and very brought back when it's Very interesting. Back. We are in a public forum, are we not? I'm not going to get into that debate. We're at a tabling motion right now. We're going to move towards a recorded vote. Madam Clerk, when you're ready. Thank you. Councillor Marks. No. Councillor Guyberson? No. Councillor Hurst? No. Councillor Neal is absent. Councillor Nicholson? Yes. And Mayor Carter? No. Daily motion is defeated <laughs> on the main motion. Councillor Nicholson. If I can continue, um, I'm not going to support this motion. I can't think of a more negative message to send to our residents uh, than this uh, particular motion, um, especially without the opportunity for the vast majority of the public to have any comment on this at all. Um, to put it succinctly, we all knew what the hours and schedule of our meetings were going to be um, when we ran for office. Um, if it were my particular power, and if I were, you know, the, uh, the dictator in chief or one like that, I, I would put all committee meetings in the evening, including standing <laughs> committees. In fact, I would do the same with region. I move all the region meetings in the evening as well because you know people have personal responsibilities during the daytime. And this is not to be a motion that's about our comfort. And this is, I think, how it's going to be seen. It's going to be seen as it's members of council rearranging their schedule to meet the needs of the members of council as to rather trying to meet the needs of the community. Um, you'd have to just look at the wording of, of the motion. It, it's all oriented towards the council's process. And I can tell you, um, look at an example today. This is one example. We have today standing committees with over a thousand pages of information that members of council have to pursue. And if a member of the public wanted to deal with those, they also then have a thousand pages of information. If I'm allowed, and, I, and we're, we're pushed to a council meeting at 9.30 in the morning, then, especially on a Monday, then I've got, what, half an hour to speak to staff? I'm assuming staff get in at 8.30, they get a chance to get their duties. I arrive at 9, I'm trying to start making phone calls, I've got a half hour to speak to staff regarding any contents, any questions I might have. If it's a 6.30 start, I've got all day to inquire and gain information. Well, that also applies to members of the public. They have all day to speak to their counselors, to speak to staff to gain information, to prepare themselves if they wish to be a delegation. Um, you can't do that over a weekend. No, that's we're planning to have our staff sitting here on Saturday and Sunday available for taking calls from the public. Um, I, I just think that, it, you know, and I, I, I respect, I want to be as respectful as I can to the mover because it's a legitimate argument. Whatever side of the argument you're on this one, it's a legitimate argument. But when the, the balance comes down to your decision making, you have to ask yourself, and it is my view, you have to ask yourself the question, is this for my comfort, in my best interest, or is this for the public's best interest? Um, my personal view is, the current system is what we agreed to. 
when we ran. If this motion were to suggest a change effective following the next election, so that all members of the community that are running for office understand what the time constraints are, and then, then everyone knows the process, it might be more amenable. Probably not, but I might be more amenable, at least if the public wished that, you know. Um, but to do this midstream, I think, um, sends the wrong message. And uh, I respectfully suggest and urge my colleagues to, to not support this motion and to maintain the status quo. Thank you very much. Members of the committee. Councillor Guyberson. Thank you, Chair Marks. Uh, I am... Uh... I'm certainly interested in hearing more from the, uh, the, the mover of the original notice of motion on this. Uh, I, I'm trying to keep an open mind on this particular matter. Um, if, you, if you have a quick survey of other cities in Ontario, uh, there's actually quite a considerable number of them that have daytime council meetings. So it, it isn't unheard of. Um, it's not, uh, it's not, I think, that there's any one right or wrong answer on this particular matter. Um, but there's other issues that this raises, and, um, you know, I, I don't think just sweeping it under the rug will, will solve some of those issues. We have council meetings that are going quite late into the evening. Uh, I don't know that uh, clarity of decision-making comes when people who are used to uh, used to so-called normal working hours are uh, still there at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, past midnight. And at the end of the day, we're, we are doing the business of uh, the municipality, of the residents, and that's part of our job on an ongoing basis is to, to be getting the pulse of the residents and stakeholders. And, um, you know, I, I don't want to confine our perspective to uh, the idea that that can only happen based on the scheduling of, of uh, council meetings. If there are municipalities out there that are doing daytime meetings successfully, uh, and, uh, and some of them with quite robust uh, community democracy, uh, it's not like it's just outliers that are doing this. I believe Toronto is one. Um, I had a quick look on my phone uh, at one point earlier in the meeting and found out that Brampton has daytime meetings, the city of Ottawa has daytime meetings, uh, Mississauga might have been another one. So uh, it, it, it happens in some places. And, uh, you know, I, I think that there's also a question of fairness as well to, uh, to our staff who have to be here again until late hours, and um, as well as members of the public. It's not even necessarily fair to ask members of the public to be here until midnight for their uh, item that they're interested in to, to, to come up finally. Uh, so we either have to use this as a dialogue, a larger dialogue about the length of our meetings and timing of our meetings as a whole, or we just focus on a few of the things that are in this, uh, in this agenda. It's not just the meeting times that are in here, but also the meeting intervals. I, I think that these are all matters that should be discussed rather than um, just snuff this out and, and not have that conversation because uh, there are issues that are needing addressing. Uh, the long meetings are a challenge. They're, they're not ideal for hearing from the public, for decision making, for getting proper staff feedback as we're, as we're deliberating on matters. So, uh, you know, I, I'm certainly amenable to, to, to uh, doing some public consultation on this. I don't think there's anything wrong with that necessarily. It may change the timeline that, the, uh, that Councillor Miriam Petrie has uh, aimed for in the wording of the, the notice of motion if we do go to that sort of process. But I really hope that there's an opportunity to have a fulsome dialogue on this rather than just uh, jumping to a decision either yes or no without having that dialogue because we, we, do, have, uh, we do have to realize that democracy is not, it's not just a, a simple question of meeting times. It's, it's also a question of effectiveness in our representation. So I look forward to hearing from other members of committee and council. Thank you. To the drafter of the motion, Councillor Mayor Petrie. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I mean, you're not going to get a better speaker than, than Councillor Garrison on, on uh, the matter for uh, which he just spoke on. It's pretty, uh, pretty succinct. I mean, he, he brought up some points that I'd like to echo, and that being that there are municipalities that have undertaken this, uh, this endeavor, and, and I think there are a number of reasons. Um, if anybody knows me, they'll know that I'm a night guy. 
I go to midnight, one, two, three, four in the morning. I'm fine. I just don't know if our staff would be fine or if the costs for the city would continue to be fine and if taxpayers would continue to appreciate uh, what occurs um, in, in those hours, um, considering the costs that may be incurred with professional services as well. We recently had a meeting, and I, and I have to take us back to even to the beginning of my time on council, which was in 2003. I felt the same way back then, but we didn't have live streaming. Uh, we were covered uh, for every meeting by Rogers. We have our booth right back here. Uh, that doesn't happen any longer. Um, and times were different. We didn't have social media. Um, we didn't even have cell phones. Uh, I believe a few months in, we were asked if we wanted to have, you know, one of those flip phones, those mic flip phones with the two-way recording thing where you can uh, mic people. And uh, Blackberries came um, uh, a few, few years after that, uh, for us anyways. So that was 2003. We're in 2019. Um, I think modernizing the process uh, and being respectful of what taxpayers expect uh, is, is, is appropriate. And I think um, to Councillor Guyverson's uh, remarks about the public consultation um, in wanting to hear a little bit more from myself, I'll tell you, um, we were actually, uh, the three of us, uh, Mr. Chair, you and Councillor Guyverson and I out to lunch, and it kind of was the straw that broke the camel's back for me where um, some seniors looked at us and said, we can't even, we don't even know what's going on anymore at the council meetings because sometimes it may not be covered in, in local media and sometimes it's not covered by Rogers. But for the most part, especially in the winter, we can't get out to the meetings. And they're getting later and later and it's dreary and dark. And we would love to be able to participate, but we can at that hour. Uh, because the question came from me to this individual and, and some of uh, their friends, how come we don't see a council anymore? And they told us. Uh, but that wasn't the only consultation. There were many, many instances where throughout the number of months, I think it's been 11, 12 months, that I've asked folks, you know, what do you think of how we deal with things at council? And there have been processes put into place uh, by this council. No disrespect to anyone because I think Councillor Nicholson was very, very, um, um, you know, uh, clear in, in the fact that through the process of us modernizing the council procedures, no one has been disrespectful. Actually, there's, there's not, there hasn't been anyone more respectful than Councillor Nicholson. Uh, we're friends. And, and I think that everyone around the table has been respectful to the fact that, um, yeah, we were elected, but we were elected to make some changes. And change is, uh, is difficult at times, uh, may be wrong to some. Uh, I've had friends even indicate, like, why, why are you guys going from, you know, potentially 6.30 to, to 9.30 in the morning? And then when that was explained, um, they came and they said, well, you know what, now I get it, I understand, uh, you have a point. I'm not going to get into, you know, why some have been on council for this long and haven't moved motions at the region to move the hours uh, to the evening or why, you know, I have chosen to take this opportunity to modernize the council procedure with committee and council support on behalf of staff, on behalf of, uh, you know, we've got professional staff here today which if this meeting was occurring at night and with a debate that we've had, I've seen where we've had to have people come back after our in-camera meetings and be present at 12.30 at night. Is that normal? I mean, th those aren't normal business hours. Those aren't conducive to making good business decisions. And I certainly don't think that the public would expect us to be debating sensitive issues um, at that time of the night at the cost that they may incur, uh, both financially and, um, you know, uh, theoretical and, and, and practical. So some may argue I'm still wrong, um, but this isn't about me. Uh, I, I began, you know, my remarks by telling you through you, Mr. Chair, that I'm fine at four in the morning, I'm fine at three, I'm fine, I'm fine at whatever time council decides. It's not my decision, but I do believe it would be appreciated by staff by uh, the folks that are coming to speak to us on issues um, and, and for example, our taxpayers to make sure that we've got a consistent process where um, our costs are contained, our decisions are made soundly, and when you consider the time that we are already meeting in today, it's 9.30. The region, it's 9.30. Mississauga is 9.30. Toronto's 
Uh, they've got uh, Peel Region 930, York Region 930, Ottawa 930. We've got other municipalities that maybe meet at one. But the point is, is that we're not reinventing the wheel here. We're just taking a, a schedule that appeared as such and maybe with some changes since 2003 and modernizing it for 2019 and making sure that it's recognized that we have the proper streaming systems, um, we have the proper communication staff, and we have the proper uh, decision-making capabilities. And we are actually not uh, moving away from public meetings in the evening. This evening, we have a statutory meeting for development services. Those meetings will always occur in the evening. Furthermore, if there are issues, um, pressing issues, and you saw at the last council meeting, 15 individuals showed up. Um, there may not have been a pressing issue on the agenda. Uh, when we recognize the public, usually there's quite a few people that show up. We'll be doing, um, you know, public meetings in the evening still when those issues occur. And, I, and I'm confident that we're able to, you know, modernize the council procedure and, and schedule and do so in a way that's respectful, inclusive, and allows uh, the public further access. And in this case, making sure that young families and seniors are able to access uh, council more so than, say, in the evening where a lot of people are running back home from work and hockey practice and all kinds of stuff that's going on. And maybe seniors uh, may not, uh, you know, be getting the live, or, sorry, the, the Rogers feeds that they used to. And if they wish to come in daylight and make sure that they're here, um, um, we welcome them uh, just as we would in the evening if council decides that. And, and I think at this point, Mr. Chair, I think we do have the tools and, and the necessary information before us to be able to make a decision at committee and council uh, without having to go to a public meeting. I believe a public meeting uh, should be reserved for, you know, matters that are really, really sensitive in terms of development, in terms of city infrastructure, and in terms of uh, public policy that really does have a huge impact. And I think this one um, may be argued to have a similar impact. But I think when you're making a positive, um, you know, change, I think the public would uh, would appreciate us as elected officials making it for them as opposed to uh, holding referendums. Thank you very much, Councillor. And I do remember that lunch because I believe I picked up the, the tab, but we'll discuss that another time. I have Councillor Kerr and then Councillor Gray. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. A uh, comment was made that, you know, we should be having a conversation on this. I think that's what we're doing right now, which is good. That's the purpose of committee. The thing that concerns me about this um, motion is it's not whether other municipalities have their meetings during the day, because they, frankly, they may always have been set up that way. But ours have always been set up at night. So, you know, comments have been made in the past about change versus status quo, and I think there's strengths for change and strengths for status quo, but you have to understand what those strengths are. So, a thing about municipal government versus regional or other levels is that it's the most grassroots level of government. It gives the public the most opportunity, or it should, to be heard, to be seen, and to be heard. So there are people that perhaps can't make either time. But I think part of the question is, which one can they attend at a greater level of participation? Most of the meetings we have that have gone long have been special event meetings, um, something to do with the um, Animal Care Committee, uh, something to do with uh, Uber, uh, that one went till past 1 a.m. Those aren't council meetings. We've had council meetings that have gone an hour and 15 minutes. They've been very rare that a council meeting has gone really long. I think we've had one this year. So the council meeting is where the decisions are made. They're not made a committee, they're ratified and made a council. And the public would probably want to be more there for that decision-making process than they would necessarily for the build-up. That's where the money is, if you want to put it that way. I guess the next point is that there are special nights at council. I can think of a few. The Oshawa Sports Hall of Fame is a huge night in January. The gallery's packed. The inductees are brought in, and when that piece is done, they all go and have a celebration elsewhere. But they're here in council. They see what the council chamber is like, and they see how decisions are made, and that's important. We have community awards where the galleries are packed for various members of the community who have done some great service things, and they're recognized. We have the anthem singing where, you know, public schools come in. They can't come in during the day, neither can their parents. 
and we have staff recognitions. And whilst you might say that's just well for staff, no, I think members of the public want to see who our staff are so they can put a face with a name and see the kind of recognition and qualification that our staff have. That's important. It's important for people to know how good our staff are, and they are very, very good. And I guess the next point I want to make is that I would support, certainly, the um, move to one meeting or one set of meetings a month. I think that gives our staff more time to prepare, more time for the public to respond. I would support that. But the one thing that concerns me about moving this to the daytime, oh, well, if there's a regional meeting on a Tuesday, then we'll bump it to Tuesday evening. Or if there's something Tuesday evening, we'll bump it here. Where's the priority? The priority is our council meeting. And it should be on a day that everybody knows it takes place so they can set their calendar. I don't want to see our council meeting bump from pillar to post. I want to see it regulated so that people know when it is so they can plan to attend. Because it's a grassroots meeting and because we want the public here to see how their tax dollars are being spent. And I guess maybe my, my uh, last point, I think if it is, is that there was raised the, uh, the aspect of cost. Well, you know what? I think the public will approve and accept the cost of these meetings if it allows them the most access and the most input. Some things are worth the cost. I, I understand the staff concern. It's a late night for staff. I get that. A late night for everybody. But it doesn't happen very often. So uh, I need to be convinced more strongly that we need to move what we've done for an awfully long time by servicing our, our public and our citizens in the evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Gray. Thank you very much. Uh, without reservation, I support day meetings. We're elected to conduct the business of the city. As um, Councillor Mayor Pietri mentioned when he took us down memory lane, in the olden days, sometimes those council meetings didn't get broadcast because they were doing another council somewhere else, so you didn't get to find out what happens. Well, now we have the web streaming. You can watch it at any time when it's What's your, what suits your schedule? You can find out what's happened at committee. You can find out what's happened at council. And that's giving the public accessibility so they get firsthand knowledge. Who said what? How they said it? I think it's a brilliant idea. Now, I want to tell you that part of this motion, I believe, is flawed. I don't want to see us move to the four-week schedule. I'm still firmly set on the three-week schedule. Continue the work of the, the business of the, of the uh, corporation right through. Um, so that's the only flaw I see in this particular motion. As some people said, it's modernizing. Um, who conducts their business during the day? Most people do. Well, council is part of conducting the business of the city. So it should be done during the day. I also invite you to realize that staff are here not only during the day, but they too must be here at night. And there's been more than a few meetings that have gone rather late. And if any of you may not, maybe you just have this ability to leave council meeting, go home, and you can go right to bed. Um, some of us need wind-down time. Well, that wind-down time turns us into 2 in the morning. Um, it's a, and then, but the problem is you can probably sleep in. Staff can't. They're back here the next day conducting the business of the city as well. Uh, so doesn't it make sense to do this during the day? Everybody's still going to be able to find out what we did. Uh, so to me, it makes a lot of sense. Um, the old notions that we have, to, are, I think, go back to the olden days when a lot of people used to come out to council meetings. If you actually look, survey that the, when we have a council meeting, they're usually here for very specific reasons, and it's because they can come out. Many of them, I'm sure, could come during the day if they're truly interested. And as somebody already mentioned, the real foundation of a council meeting is in committee. Council ratifies, or council undoes a recommendation from, from committee. We meet during the day. This is a morning session. This afternoon, we're going to be over at planning. In the afternoon, followed by an evening session. I don't think this is the end of the world, as some would want to portray it. Let's conduct the business of the city during business hours. Um, we'll be as thoughtful. And I can tell you, some previous council meetings, I've been, part, been, been there, 
they have gone on extremely late. And that's usually when you get um, some amendments dumped on the council floor that because now you've been operating for the best part of your day, you look at those amendments the next day and you realize that there was a little trap there. Um, when everybody is clear-headed, I think we make better decisions for the city. And that's why my belief Daytime meetings are the way to go. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hurst. Thank you, um, Chair Marks. Um, everything that I've wanted to say really has been said. Uh, I am in support of, of the motion for all the reasons already been put forward by uh, the by Councillor Mayor Petrie and by Councillor Gray and Councillor Guyerson. Um This uh, topic has already been broadly uh, written in the local media, print media, and online. And I can tell you that I've only heard, I've, beside uh, the delegation by Mr. White today, I've had one telephone call about this. That's it. And that's, so that goes to show you, in my mind, um, the lack of uh, real uh, interest in, in the community. And also, people could have been here today. They could have sent in letters, uh, emails to H to us, but uh, to the best of my knowledge, there has been nothing else uh, provided. I, uh, I agree that doing the business of the city during, during the daytime is much more effective as, a, as an elected official. I know I'm more clear-headed at 2 o'clock in the afternoon to make a, a well thought decision than at midnight. And again, I look at our, our terrific staff. Um, you know, they're they're here all day. They're into the evening, and they're back at it in the morning. Uh, during the course of any meetings, uh, during the daytime, if we need any extra supplementary information, it'd be readily available by uh, staff people who wouldn't normally be in attendance. And also, um, I, I think it's good the modernizing. Uh, aspect of this so I wholeheartedly support uh, trying this it's not the end of the world other people have done it and I for all the uh, reasons put forward I think we should go ahead and support this motion as presented thank you thank you Councillor Nicholson <clears throat> thank you uh, just a couple of procedural questions so I can understand first of all I'd like to request the division uh, okay. on all parts um, secondly, um, it's my understanding, and one of the, the clerk's representatives can assist on this. Sorry to cut you off, Councillor. The division on all parts, just procedurally, so I can get my head around this. I'm looking at A, B, C, 2, and 3. Correct. 